for the developing strength and conditioning coaches or sports science students uh, listening in, do you think you should prioritize one over the other early on in your career? It's a balancing act because there's a number of them that fall either side of the equation, right? In terms of you've got to be able to influence and form relationships. So that's about people management, but then you have to technically know what you're doing. So you've got to be able to quite quickly form a relationship, able to influence in that space with the expertise that you have. So you've got to build that relationship so they become comfortable with you then using your expertise in an area that they have not a whole lot of knowledge about. But how do you present that in a way of not pulling the shutters up by the coach in terms of you make them feel threatened? So it's, it's reading people. It's um, forming those relationships, but then applying your expertise to actually get your quick wins and build on those. And that profiling process, what, what are the most sort of effective ways that you found? Is it questionnaires? Is it interviews one-on-one -on -one with the athletes? It's a mixture of both, right? There's quite a number of profiling tools out there now. The you know, Myers-Briggs, Strength Deployment Inventory, Hogan, those. And look, there's an associated cost that comes with those which in most cases, coaches don't have access to that sort of funds to do it. But reading about those, you can actually sort of pick the styles of people by understanding those profiling tools. I use the strength deployment inventory with my team at the moment. We've got a team profile and then people understand the team profile and who sits where. I have a predominance of people orientated to staff and process orientated stuff. And then leaders within my team are actually moved towards the outcome orientated situation. And they're color coded. People, people are blue, um, process people are green, outcome people are red. Some tips or tricks um, for improving communication with athletes. Perhaps you, you brief a, a large group before they're about to start a session. You've got to present yourself as being flexible, taking on board different ideas. It's pitching in, in a way that's not being dictatorial because you'll get half of the group will switch off in terms of, oh, here they go, they're telling us what to do again. It's actually outlining why you're doing it and what the expected outcomes are. And you want feedback from them if they don't believe they're moving towards the expected outcome. It's more a case of saying, look, this is where we want to get to, this is how we believe is the best way of doing it. I'm open to any other suggestions from you coming now, but we'll have, give this a go first and we'll pivot if we need to pivot. So it just saying the same thing in, in many ways, but pitching it just slightly differently. So it incorporates them buying into it. Um, I always feel that you get a much better outcome. In terms of visualization, is that Demoing movements, what are some other sort of visual tools that you can do to help with that process? It's using the competition context in terms of people who do it well. So have a competition video clip of this is the high performer doing it. This is what we want to get to, or this is how we want it to be done as effectively. This is where you're at, and this would be what we would perceive as the gap. So what are the stepping stones we're going to take to get there? So it's outlining that. So you get them to buy into that process as well. So it's making sure that they understand that you've got their best interests at heart, that it's you're buying into their development and their performance progressions. Has there been a significant gap in either people's skills or technical skills that you've seen over the last sort of five years? So for the modern intern student coming through? I think it depends on the type of people that you actually bring on board. I always tend to look at it is that you recruit hard, manage easy uh, is, is a mantra that uh, I definitely buy into is that you spend the time in, again, understanding the person you want to bring on board as an intern or a staff member that adds impact into your performance team. And can they operate as effectively as they need to within the environment that you've got? You've got to check that. You might have the world best biomechanist, but they might have no communication skills, right? So are you getting the best out of them? And you've got to check that, but you've also got to say, can I enable that? So just because it doesn't present itself there and then when you actually look at who you're going to recruit in that situation is what's the propensity. So it's, it's actually checking and challenging questioning wise as to 
why they present that way. What motivates them? What drives them? Would they be prepared to actually spend the time developing in that space? 